Oh boy, I haven't been this excited for a very, very long time going into my workshop. And that's because... Cue the dramatic music. Dun, dun, dun. I got a live second hand. I think it's 40 years old and the guy also gave me all these accessories with it with a grinder and a drawer full of different cutters and accessories that I probably won't be using but still would be useful down in the future <coughs> and thus it arises the need to make another stand for it just like how I did for the pants router and also the bandsaw over there and this time I'm not actually going to make it on wheels because I really need this to be very stable uh, so I'm probably going to make it to replace one of these stands, either this one over here, replace that one, or replace the one that's sitting over there. I'm not sure which one yet, I'll have to build it and then see which one will fit. Length, width, uh, somewhere there, so around about one meter high, yeah. And for this project, I'm going to try and use as much stuff that I already have since I'm kind of running out of space to store wood. I am using some very nice jar of floorboards for this because I recently just got a truckload of them and they look very shabby, so perfect for a shop project. Since the boards aren't quite thick enough, I'm doubling them up to make them thicker. Then I can mill them to their final sizes. When cutting them to length, I had to set my saw horses to support the other end to prevent it from tipping. Just finished cutting all the jar to length and now my table saw is covered with jar. It used to be yellow, now it's all red. Which actually looks pretty cool when contrasted against the blue. So, how's this going to go together? I can put the grinder over here along with my sharpening stone beneath it. So here, and a grinder here and it just draws all the way here. I'm not going to use box joints for the corners this time around because it is just way too bulky to fit into my box joint jig and push it through the table saw. So instead I'm just going to use a whole bunch of floating tenons and yeah. Oh yes, and for the middle piece I'm going to use data. For this I'm of course going to use my pen runner which is very good at making mortises. Oh yes, by the way, I found a much better substitute for uh, shimming your router bits with painter's tape and that is to use aluminium foil, just like how I did for this one. It's been shimmed up by 0.7 of a millimetre. Next, I can make the floating tenons that fit inside the mortises and those are out of jar as well. I am dry fitting it to check whether everything works out. Before I do anything else, I'm going to start put a chamfer on the inside edges of this thing. Then I can use the table saw to create a rebate. The longer side pieces received a soft rebate and I did this by drawing a few lines on the table saw to help guide me.
for the dados, I'm going to use the perfect dado trick that I got from the TS1. So while Ethan is doing the corners, I'm going to cut the panels to fit inside the frame and for that I'm once again going to use these particle boards that I used last time for the pants rider stand since the veneers of this seems to be pretty nice. Since both panels are a little bit too short, I've decided to join them up like that but to hide the seam, I have made another piece of wood to go in between like so. Since the particle boards had two different veneers on either side, we then had to choose which veneer we liked best to face outwards. So, Ethan, which one do you think is prettier? This one probably. Okay, yeah, then we'll go with this one then. Before gluing the panels in, I used the pen rider again to cut the mortises out. Okay, it's time for the big glow up and I've got the camera set up at a very wide angle and hopefully it will capture every glorious moment of it. Well, I guess I didn't get the camera to go high enough because I was originally going to glow it up on the floor but once I got started on my workbench, I couldn't be bothered lifting the whole thing down. Not stressful at all. With the hard work behind us, we can now start to put a rebate around the inside edge to receive the top. Okay then, this is where I'm going to leave this video for now. I've just attached the top and I'm going to varnish it, which is very, very boring. So I'm going to do that off camera. And in the next video, I'm going to make the drawers and also attach the back.